three girls, Julie Senior, mother, a carpet mill worker. Kathleen Snell, from a weaving family. And Jacqueline Ingham, daughter of a railwayman who made himself a teacher. For them in Sorby Bridge, Yorkshire, a time of decision. In Hope, five years ago, they started together at Ryburn School. Today it's the last end of term, a new opportunity. There's a ritual to be observed. For Kathleen Snell, family duties first. Go on, For Julie Senior, the last walk over the hill to school. At 16, by law, these girls have already been 12 months longer at school than their elder sisters. This is the first output off the newest educational line. in the school and now they've gone. It's an unruly, crowded day. Traditionally a time for the football finals and for the local pace eggers. At the sound of the trumpet. At the beat of the drum, make room, brave gallants, and let our merry actors come. Come on, get in. Right, now let's have the other. For some, this day couldn't come soon enough. Listen to them. Julie, your headmaster reckons you could have made much more of yourself at school. What went wrong? Well, I got fed up with schoolwork. Played truant with my friends. I never used to play truant. Just started playing it with my friends. And I started doing it on my own. Have you been doing it recently? Last, last Wednesday morning. Tuesday morning. All day Thursday. Isn't that it? Come on! How do you do it? How do you play truant? You just walk out. If anybody asks you where you're going, you say you're going to the dentist. You say, have you got your card? You say, no, I've left it at home. Well, you just walk straight through the school gates, or do you, do you try and creep away quietly? And you keep out of Mr. Widow's office. How do you do that? Keep under the sheds and, and sneak around back and go across the green and home. Down the road. You mean literally, you duck down <laughs> and creep along the wall? So since the 
beginning of the winter term, how much time have you taken off then? About four months. Four months? Yeah. Oh, okay. How many other girls do it? Loads. Oh, dropouts, you know. <laughs> or what? Dropouts. <laughs> oh, they're not, what ain't bothered. Is that how you think of yourself? Has the school tried to help her? Do you resent it when they sort of appear to interfere like that? Yeah. When they... What do you think? No, the old cows. <laughs> but they're not really, are they? Aren't they? Aren't they actually trying to help you? I think half of them just nosy. I don't know what you're doing and stuff like that. What's there to be nosy about that? Well, they ask you, they ask you all sorts, you know. Is, does your mum hit you a lot and how long's your dad been gone and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. I told him all once, so I'm telling you again. Yeah. I mean, they ask you whether whether your mum lays into you. What do you say then? No. It's very rare she lays into me. She, hardly ever it's me because I had a road accident, you know, and I ain't got to get excited or anything like that. When was the road accident? 1969. Just before I come here. Were you badly hurt? Well, f yeah, fairly. How were you hurt? I had uh, six, six cracked ribs, fractured skull, and my spleen removed, and all road burns, and a fractured ankle. And how did that happen? You were knocked down, were you? Outside our house. What are you looking forward to about about leaving school? Money. Money. How much are you going to get? About ten pound. Wouldn't you like to stay on at school, get a few qualifications? No. What, no, what good are they? No, they're no good. You can get just a good, good a job without them. Well, think about it. I mean, some people stay on, don't they? Stay and get exams and get decent jobs. Oh, and then what, what I get along with in life. Well, I'm not particularly bothered where I go. <laughs> uh, well, I want to stay and I want to be a teacher. I want to go to grammar school. You want to be a teacher? Yes. That's going to be hard graft ahead of you, right? Yeah. What are you going to have to do? Uh, well, I'll have to go to grammar school for two years and then I'll have to go to college for about three years before I become a teacher. So when, how old will you be when you become a teacher? Uh, I think about 20, 21. Well, what do you think of the, your friends, girls here at this school who, who are leaving now at 16? Well, I think they'll regret it afterwards. But if that's what they want to do, you know, it's all right for them, but I think they'll regret it if they leave before taking their exams. What do you mean they'll regret it? Well, they won't have, if they want to apply for another job, and uh, this job wants certain qualifications, but they won't have them then. So that I think they might regret it then and wish they'd stayed on at school to take these exams. But they'll have the money, won't they? They'll have the money in a few days' time, and you won't for another five years. Oh, yes, but I don't think money's everything. They might, you know, I'd rather have a good job than money. What do your parents think of you staying on at school, going to be a teacher? Well, they want me to do it. They, they encourage me to do it. Well, your father's been teaching at this school for three years now, but what was he doing before that? Uh, he worked on the railways as a single man. What do they say to you about teaching, those that are going into the mills? Um, they seem to think it's a bit ambitious, you know, a bit of an ambition. Just keep it at that level. Would you say you're well behaved at school? No. <laughs> No, I'm terrible at school. I, I don't usually come. Do you play truant as much as that now? No, I don't. I haven't done it. I have played truant oh, for about six months. What made, what, what brought about the change? I don't know. I just say to myself one morning, I'm going to school. I'm not going to sneak off. And I, I just got into my rain that I wasn't going to do it anymore. But why? I mean, did you did you want to learn got, something? Or no, you... I just got fed up of being found out and played equity. <laughs> Looking back, do you regret now that you that you played truant as much as you did? I don't know. I think I do in a way, but yet in another. 
I'm not, I don't, you know. I mean, I hated the teachers because I couldn't stand the teachers and I couldn't stand the lesson. But yet, I look at all other people and I see all their exam passes and this and other. And I think, well, I wish I could have done that. But it's not too late, is it? I mean, you could still take the exams, couldn't you? No, because I've missed too much of it to really catch up now. But why can't you stay on? I don't want to. I don't want to stop on no more. It's boring. But is it going to be any different when you leave school? If you find it life well, so boring here? Well, when you go to work, you've got to work. And you've got to work. But and haven't you got about. to work here? I don't look like it, does it? Because I've nicked off, I'm there. So where are you going? Edelst Edelstons. I'm going weaving there. It looks that interesting. I think I'll like, I think I'll like there myself. How do you know that it's going to be so different from being at school? Well, I've seen my sister. She's turned completely different after she left school. And In my what? brother did. In what way? How did you see Her personality sister? changed and... She looked after herself a lot better. She went out at nights more often. She were, I don't know, she, she just seemed to change all of a sudden. What's life like at home? I'm happy at home. I'm, I mean, I've got two younger brothers, an older sister, a nephew, and my mum living at home. My dad lives just four doors away from us. How does that work out? Well, they're divorced, you see, my mum and dad. Are you going to be content as a mill girl? Well, I, I think I'd look like to be one of them, uh, one of them that trains you. A sort of super boxer? Yeah. So you've got ambitions before you've even got there? <laughs> I'd love to have manager's job, but I don't think that I'd be... <laughs> I think I'll be able to do that. <laughs> A boy was born at Bethlehem that knew the hearts of Galilee. He wandered on the on Mount Lebanon. 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 Say Lebanon. it quickly. Lebanon. 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 That's right. <laughs> of Galilee. He wandered on Mount Labadon and learned to love each forest tree. But I was born at Marlborough and loved the homely faces there. And for all of the men besides, tis little love I have to spare. And yet I think at Gothgolath, 
as Jesus' eyes were closed in death. They saw with love most passionate the village street at Nazareth. Kathleen Snell, John Moran and Christine Sweeney. That was very beautiful, it read. Thank you. See you again. Julie Senior came late for the leaving service. She misses reading her lesson. Her name isn't called out. Susan Waite. has above average academic ability and would have probably been quite successful had she stayed on to take CSC examinations. Julie's most outstanding contributions to the school have been her appearances in the school plays. She has taken leading parts and coped with this remarkably well and reliably. <laughs> Kathleen is a mature girl of above average ability. She is quick to learn and interests in what she is doing. In the courses at Cal College, Tamadi, she was committed to what she was doing and transmitted her interest and enthusiasm. She has proved to be a valuable as asset in this school. Asset. Same. Sure, hopes. <laughs> Don't correct me, but. Is that paper there, Jackie, that I promised you? This, the plain paper that you were asking for. And also, when you were asking me to look at this, there are a few points. To start with, when you look at the project, the first page is all important because of the impression it gives on somebody, and that is downright tatty. You put all your pictures together, and to me, it's partly a fact. to see you. Sit down, make yourself at home. Thank you. Are you enjoying yourself with school, man, love? Yeah. And progressing? Yeah. Well, uh, we'll see what we can do with this him tune, Arizona, see if we can play it better than we did last week when yeah. we playing it together. Don't forget, whatever you do, use your tongue and, mm. and give your notes the proper length. Yeah. Right. Right, thank you. Two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> Concentrating on you, I've, I've nearly missed a note or two yeah. myself with my tongue. Right, we'll try another one, number 21. God be with you till we meet again. Yeah. This is after four, remember, there's yeah. four beats in a bar here. Yeah? Yeah. Right, after four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Till I knock it off like this, I'll play you my last note and then you'll see, and then I'll carry on then and just tell you how to pick that other up, you see, like this. Then you'll play 
la da da ra di and it's single F, so don't forget that. How much do you want for it? Oh, it's two, dear. Oh, not three pence off. Come in. Yes, all right. About 10,000 rates. Very good. Now then, young lady. From Ryburn School, I believe. Yes. Kathleen Snell. Yes, sir. We have uh, your sister working here, haven't we? Yes. And we've had quite a few girls from Ryburn who have done very well over the years. I'm pleased to welcome you. We shall depend on you, Kathleen, to do your work as well as you can possibly do it. You must be punctual at your work and attend to your work. Don't fool around or there's no room for you here. But if you attend to your work and get on to piecework, you'll find that it's very rewarding. I'll try my best. That's right. Julie, Julie Senior. Yeah. Right. Come in. Put your overall down here, look. You're caught off there. Yes. We'll find your locker afterwards. Mm -hmm. to ask me before we, we start, do you feel? I want you to um, take notice of me and watch what I'm doing. On the first row below here, you add three navy blue. Can you see the three navy blue? Yeah. But, uh, will you point them out to me so that I know that you know where I am? Go, go and... Uh, no, don't just go easy for like that. Just make it sort of... That's better. Now, what do you want in place of those are two lighter ones, aren't they? No, you can't find the answer there. You find the answer here. You hold each strand separately and wind out from the top. Where are you? Come round here and watch me there. You should actually wind with the strand. Are you left-handed? Yeah. Oh, are you? I wondered if you were. Yeah. Just hold it up, let me know. See, hold it like that, firm, so that you see what you've got and wind out. Now, come on. No, you, you must look business-like, you know. Are you half sugar? Yes. Right, look. Is that yours, Julie? Right, there you are. Smart. Good. Have you had enough of today? <laughs> <laughs> Just you wait while I'm chasing you around. <laughs> How did you feel when you got home? Well, 
I got home, sat down and I rubbed my legs because they were cramp all, all up way back, you know. My ears was thumping and my head were aching. I was really tired actually. You know, we're standing up all day and listening to them looms. It's not so bad. After, after a week you can't hear it. You, ca you can't really hear them at all. In fact, you can put a, a pop music to the sound of them. You know, plonk, 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 plonk. <laughs> Quite suddenly, in the middle of her new life, Kathleen Snell's father dies. He lived four doors away. She saw him every day, did his washing. record attempt. That target means for the Ellen Silver Band, 14 hours non-stop. experiences with Elsie? <laughs> yeah, um, I put my shuttle in my wrong box and they both clashed in together in front of me alone and uh, I had a load of ends down. We had what to put all them up. <laughs> what did you say? What have I done wrong? <laughs> now when you first started there, how much money did you get? Uh, 13 pounds. That was in your first wage packet? Yes. Uh, not my very first one, no. My first one I only drew two, uh, two days and I drew five pound. What about your first wage packet? How much was in that? 
thirteen pound twenty-five. What did you do with that? They made a mistake. <laughs> they made a mistake. Yeah. I... In whose favour? I don't know. Accountants, I think. Hmm? You mean they gave you too much? Mm. You shouldn't should want to give you ten pounds seventy-four. Did you say anything about it? No. So what are you doing now? Are you still being trained? No, I'm on piecework now. That's in a really quite a short space of time, isn't it? How long did you have to be trained for? Well, I, I was with my trainer for two weeks, and then she put me on my own looms and see how I went on with my own looms for another two weeks, and now I'm on piecework. So when did you realise in that period, those two two periods of two weeks that you, you were going to be able to do the job? About the second week, I think. I asked see if I could go on my own rooms, more or less, you know. You asked to, to go on Yeah, to see if I could do it. And what did they say? He says yes, you know, they, they were not pleased really, you know, to, for me to ask them. Now you're on piecework, what sort of money are you, are you going to get now? Uh, I can earn up to uh, £25. Are you a setter yet? No. Well, what have you been doing? I'm getting to know colours, emptying carts onto tables for lasses. Uh, being up on the top floor, putting some, doing some returns after lasses have felled. I've been doing all sorts really. So cleaning up. I've been cleaning up. <laughs> Sort of odd jobbing? Yeah. I no, mean, the dog's body up and down. Who are your dog's body to? Oh, all of them. Have you been at work the whole of the seven weeks? No. Oh. What happened? I went home on Thursday morning because I weren't feeling too well. And I stayed off. Friday, and I went down to doctors and put me on sick for a week. I got fed up at home, so I went back down and asked him to take me off, and I went back Tuesday after holidays. Do you think you'll stick the job? Yeah. And then how much money will you earn when you qualify as a setter? Depends how hard you work. What do you mean, how hard you work? Well, you can you can earn up to thirty pound if you work really hard, you know. What will you do? When you get £30 a week, what will you do with that? I don't know. It's quite a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah. I'll never get 30 so... <laughs> Why not? I don't know. You mean you won't, you won't work hard enough? I don't think so. <laughs> It's gone ten o'clock. They've done it.
What about your ambitions, Julie? I mean, what how, what do you see happening to you? What would you like to see happen to you? Very great. Your father's died, you've left school, you've started a job. Three very significant things have happened. Do you think you've grown up? I don't know. I think there's a, a lot to see before I've grown up, really. I've grown up in a, in a sense of uh, leaving school and starting a new life at a job. We're not growing up as grown-up goes. I mean, I can't... Like, I'm not old enough, like, to go, go and get married. And I aren't grown up enough to do that. You know, or uh, take big responsibilities. What sort of big responsibilities do you mean? Well, having children and getting married, like I said. Yet, if you like, your sister Margaret has taken on one of those responsibilities with a child, hasn't she? Do you think that, yeah. in a sense, she's in a kind of trap? She's, she's got herself an illegitimate child uh, and she's stuck in that job. Do you think you could get stuck in the same sort of mould? I don't think I would, no. I want to get married and have children of my own, yeah, eventually. But not until I'm about 20, you know, 21. I want to see life before I settle down. What does seeing life mean? Well, seeing really all the ups and downs of life, you know. Um, well, I don't know, I really... Just seeing life. Well, I got fed up of schoolwork, played short with my friends. I stand the teachers and I couldn't stand the lesson. No, I just got fed up of being bound out and played that <laughs> At the sound of the trumpet, yeah. at the beat of the drum, make room. The boy was born at Bethlehem. Kathleen's mature girl of a good back with your Denise Gunter, Wendy Atkins. She's calling Mother Bear, I don't know. <laughs> I think they'll regret it afterwards. We shall amend on your Kathleen. Oh, I got home. Sat down and uh, rubbed my legs because of the cramp all the way. All around. Well, there's no room for you here. I want to get married and have children of my own, yeah, eventually. Not until I'm about 20, no, 21. I want to see a life before I'm 21.